Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this day we're taking a look at Metro VB. Metro VB is a customized version of Windows 10 that mimics the look and feel of the Windows 8 technical preview. Now if you don't recall the Windows 8 technical preview, it was this weird interesting hybrid mix between Windows 7 and Windows 8. So we have some elements like the start screen, but others like Arrow. It's a very interesting point in Windows history, and quite honestly I like some of the UI elements that are seen in that technical preview. This build made by Mr. Amiskin, I know I pronounce that wrong every time we take a look at one of his ISOs, created this build right here that brings the latest and greatest Windows 10 and makes it look like that interesting technical preview build. So I'm very eager to take a look at this. We've taken a look at quite a few of this developer's previous ISOs. They've all been pretty good so far. I mean, they've all mimicked nearly exactly what they were supposed to. And this is no exception. Already starting off here on the setup screen, with that nice teal background we saw in the technical previews already saying Windows 8 and even the copyright 2012 and 2013 that we just saw on the setup screens. So far so good I'm already impressed and we're just in the startup screen. Uh, where you don't have a product key to activate Windows because we're just installing this for this video. Um, I don't even know I'm sure I can find a technical preview ISO online. This gives it away right here with the EULA last updated June 2021, obviously because that's the EULA of Windows 10 and not Windows 8. And here we go, we are now installing this technical preview. As I said, the technical preview is always a really interesting build of Windows history to take a look at because they're hybrids between their previous version and the next version. Um, especially as the years have gone on, I mean Windows 8 at this point is 13 years old, um, we can really see how far things have come. And again, I'm just eager to take a look at this build. So we'll be back once this is fully installed. All right, and here we are. The only thing I've done is I went ahead and installed VMware tools and changed the screen resolution so you guys get a better viewing experience. But here we are, and at first glance, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this custom build and the real Windows 8 technical preview. Let's go ahead and take a look here. We have this Welcome to Metro VBRP. Um, where it kind of gives us an overview, a Windows 10 installation completely modified to make it feel like the Windows 8 release preview accurately. Here are some of the things used in this mod, quite a lot of things. The various Windhawk mods, I did see that pop up on boot. And then here are some known issues. Uh, pretty cool nonetheless. And then of course big credits uh, to, I am not going to try to pronounce his name again because I screw it up every time. Uh, big credits to this developer right here for making this ISO as well as many other custom ISOs we've taken a look at in the past. And here we are. So this desktop background I believe was the one that was directly used in the release preview and we should be able to personalize it. Uh, yeah, we do have, at least we can switch to the nature theme. Um, which was also included at the time. On the desktop, like we saw, we already have this uh, Welcome to Windows VB. Um, this just is a text file in the C Windows RP folder. Uh, then we, of course, have our recycle bin, which is our traditional recycle bin that's in every ISO. Down here in the taskbar on the right side, we have our Show Desktop button. We have our clock. We then have our system volume with the Windows 7 sounds our network, which does take up the entire right side of the screen as it does in Windows 8, the Action Center, and then we have what is VMware Tools, USB, Bluetooth, and 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker uh, with all of the custom settings that were implemented by the developer. One thing I really would like to point out and the one thing I really like is I love this arrow taskbar. If Microsoft wants to compete with Liquid Glass on iOS 26 and Mac OS 26, they should seriously consider taking a look at something like this again because this taskbar and these window borders are amazing. I love them so much for how clear they are and what they look like, but I digress. Over on the left side of taskbar, we have our file explorer, um, which in this build I believe was just called this PC. Um, and then we have Internet Explorer, which I just saw that Internet Explorer is actually Firefox running as, well, I think it is. Let's see. Yeah, that we, we see right there, add-ons for Firefox. This is just Firefox themed to be IE10, which is what would have been included in this build. And you'll notice, if you don't recall exactly what Windows 8 did, that there is no Start button in this build. That is because Windows 8 did not have a Start button. You had to hover down here, and there's your Start screen, which it would then open up. Now this is the part where the immersion kind of starts to fade, because all this is is the full screen Windows 10 tablet mode 
which I get that it's really hard to actually implement the full start screen from Windows 8 release preview in this, um, but this is probably as good as we're going to be able to get. So we have our live tiles here that don't appear to be live, uh, but we do have, yeah, we have the original Windows 8 applications. Um, we had mail, uh, we have people, but they all look to require you to sign in. Um, but the difference between Windows 8 and this build is that they actually open windowed. So we can put them in windowed mode and they function just as expected. Um, in Windows 8, that was a big thing that was a problem. Uh, all the apps would open full screen and you could not take them out of full screen, which whoever approved that at Microsoft was a terrible decision maker. Um, obviously, a lot of these apps are no longer going to work for the simple fact that they are from Windows 8 and a lot of their servers have been shut down. Um, I, believe, I think that happened a few years ago, actually. I remember reading about it. Um, and this was also the time where OneDrive was called SkyDrive. I don't know what prompted the change, but they did make that change. And now it appears like we are stuck in a loop where I can't get out of SkyDrive. Um, from here, we do have the option, just like we did in Windows 8, to just start typing. And when we start typing, it brings up the search box. Now the search box in Windows 8 was actually on the right side of the start menu. It would appear as a pane over here, like where we see the charms bar, but this is not that bad either. So we click on settings and settings opens full screen, just like it would back in Windows 8. Um, and I can't actually click on any of these settings and then activate because we didn't put a key in right now. It can't activate. That makes sense. Um, but I can't actually modify any of these settings over here, which is a little disappointing. Um, but nonetheless, that might be intended or not. I'm not sure. But just like, well, unlike Windows 8, this is actually resizable, which is pretty cool. It looks weird because you're not supposed to be able to resize it. So resizing it certain ways can actually break the application. But I digress. Definitely things you shouldn't be doing or what Microsoft didn't want you doing uh, with Windows 8. So let's get back on the desktop and take a look here in our file explorer. Uh, let's take a look, minute to appreciate the window borders. I know I hinted them out earlier, but we have nice square corners with the nice arrow glass top and the arrow glass sides. It is really beautiful. Again, Microsoft, please bring this back to compete with liquid glass. Um, and then here we take a look at the local C drive, which on this disk, it's a 59.8 gig disk. We are using 16.1 gigs of space, which means we have 43.7 gigs free. Again, we're not taking a look at a tiny ISO by any means, so that is completely okay for this install of Windows. And the ISO itself was 5.24 gigs. Let's see if we can see, yeah, this just says Windows 8 build 6.2, 8400, Windows 8 release preview. And they even included a fake time bomb, expires January 15th, 2013. Obviously that is not the case because this is an untime bombed version of this specific custom ISO. Lastly, let's take a look at CPU and RAM usage. Uh, oh, and the charms bar. We will take a look at that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, in the performance tab, we have, let's see, typical, well, this isn't typical Windows CPU utilization. This is hovering around half of the CPU being used, just being idle, um, which it, I think that was actually listed as an issue uh, with the charms bar in this document. And then we have the memory where we're idling at one gig out of two gigs. And then lastly, let's take a look at that charms bar. Many of you, if you remember Windows 8, you can see this was the charms bar. Either if you had a cursor, you could come up to the top or bottom and swipe over, um, and it would bring up your charms bar where you could search, where you could share, where you could open the start menu, um, devices and settings. If you're on a tablet, you could just swipe over from the side. So what is interesting is the time is accurate. So if we open the charms bar, we can see over here in the bottom left, the time is accurate but it shows like a Wi-Fi symbol and I'm not entirely sure why it's showing a Wi-Fi symbol because well we're hardwired. With that being said this is a brief overview of Metro VBRP. If you like this video make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as we do all kinds of different technology videos including device restorations. If you have any recommendations for videos I should do in the future please let me know as I love doing viewer recommended videos. That being said I'll see you all in the next one.